Today we're going to look at a nice trigonometric identity. And I saw this identity at cutthenot.org, which is a website that isn't really updated anymore, but it's a really nice source for mathematical results. So what we will prove is that the cosine of pi over 7 times the cosine of 2 pi over 7 times the cosine of 3 pi over 7 is 1 eighth. And in order to do that cleanly, I'm going to prove the following lemma involving cosine of an angle of an isosceles triangle. So let's say we've got an isosceles triangle. So that means we've got two sides that are the same. I'll say those sides that are the same are A and the two opposing angles are the same are theta. That makes this third angle pi minus 2 theta. Next, I'll call the other side length B. So that's the length of the other side. Then we have cosine of theta is equal to B over 2A. And then how would we get that? Well, if we dissect this a little bit, it becomes quite clear. So let's drop a perpendicular from this vertex here to this side that has length B. And then let's look at the resulting triangle. So the resulting triangle looks a little bit like this. So there's our perpendicular that we've dropped. Then we have something like that. So this, like I said, is a perpendicular. But given that this is an isosceles triangle, that split this into two congruent triangles. So we know the length of this right here is B over two. Furthermore, we started with the length of this being A. And then let's see, where's our angle theta? So our angle theta is right here. Great. And now we can just pull off the definition of theta, or now we can just pull off the definition of cosine theta. So it's adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So that gives us B over 2A in this case. Okay, so now that we've got this nice warm up under our belt, let's maybe get to the solution. So our derivation of this result will be quite geometric. So let's say we start with an isosceles triangle, which I'll call ABC. This angle ACB, I'll say, has measure pi over 7. And then BC and AC are the sides that have the same length. So I'll set those lengths equal to x. So I have a length for, of x for this BC. And then I also have a length of x for this AC. But I'm going to put that up here just so that I can cut AC into pieces. Okay, nice. So our first step will be to take a point D on line segment AC so that AD is the same thing as AB. So let's see how we can do that. So we can swivel this line segment up until it intersects AC. That'll intersect right about there. So there's our point D, which is chosen, like I said, so that AD and AB have the same length. And then we might as well set that equal to a unit length. So let's set AD equal to AB equal to 1. I guess we're not setting AD equal to AB. That is how D was chosen right here. But we're saying that their common length is equal to 1. And we can scale the triangle as necessary to create that common length. Okay, so now that we have this set up, it's kind of begging us for us to complete a triangle by putting a new line segment BD. So let's do that. So here's a new line segment BD. And now we've got a couple of measurements to add. So we'll add in this AD is 1, this AB is 1, and then we'll say that A and then we'll say that BD has length Y. So that's the name that we'll give to the length of BD. Okay, now let's do a little bit of angle chasing. So let's notice that angle BAC is equal to half pi minus pi over seven. So let's write that down. So angle BAC is equal to one half pi minus pi over 7. So how do we know that? Well, angle BAC and angle ABC are the same measurement. And then we know that this angle, this whole angle here, and pi over 7 must add up to pi. So using those two pieces of information and solving for the measurement of angle BAC gives us this formula right here.
but it's pretty easy to do the arithmetic and we'll get that this is three pi over seven. Okay, so let's put that three pi over seven into our picture. So here we have this is angle measure three pi over seven. And then next we can play the same game for these two angle measures right here. So ADB and ABD, those have the same angle measure because they're opposite these sides that have the same length. So let's write that down. Angle measure ABD is the same thing as angle measure ADB, which is one half pi minus three pi over seven for the same sort of reason that we used up here. It's the same argument exactly. So making that calculation, you'll see that we get two pi over seven. So let's maybe put that into our picture. So this angle right here is two pi over seven. And then this angle right here is also two pi over seven. But notice that ABC is three pi over seven. ABD, we just measured to be two pi over seven. That tells us that this leftover bit is also pi over seven. So let's put that pi over seven right here. But now with all of these measurements, we see that we have three isosceles triangles. A, B, D is isosceles. A, B, C is isosceles by our original assumption. And then finally, B, D, C is also isosceles. And they have angle measures, pi over seven, two pi over seven, and three pi over seven, which show up in our formula up here. Furthermore, by the lemma that we proved regarding the cosine of angles of an isosceles triangle, we can finish this thing off pretty quickly. So let's do that. So let's notice that the cosine of pi over seven times the cosine of two pi over seven times the cosine of three pi over seven is equal to, well, so let's see cosine of pi over seven in this case. So that'll be x over 2y based off of our lemma. I guess maybe a heads up that also has length y. So this cosine of pi over 7 is x over 2y. Now let's look at cosine of 2 pi over 7. So that'll end up giving us y over 2. So we have this as times y over 2. And then the last thing we need to calculate is cosine 3 pi over 7. Now that we're almost done with this picture, I'll put a little orange arc in here just to point out that this is also angle measure three pi over seven. So by the same calculation that we had before, we see that that is one over two x. So we have this is one over two x. So let's notice this x cancels with this x, this y cancels with this y, and we're left with one over two times two times two or one over eight. So if you've liked this problem, I've done other trigonometric identities on the channel. Maybe you could check the one out that's on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.